Good morning, everyone. Greetings from Scotland. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Graham Patterson. And uh, two years ago, I came across to your school and spent some time in your school and uh, took assemblies and did some classroom visits and talks as well. And I was due to come back and visit you again, but unfortunately, due to the whole COVID-19 and coronavirus, we are unable to do so. So uh, I'm speaking to you this morning from my office in my garden, and uh, we'd love to be with you because actually just now in Scotland, it's raining. It's quite often raining, actually. Uh, so we'd like to be enjoying the heat of Bangalore and also seeing your faces uh, in a far better way than this. But actually, I was just looking back at some of my photographs of the time that I spent with you uh, in your school, and uh, you might be able to recognize a few faces there. I really enjoyed it, and your welcome was fantastic, so thank you for that. And hopefully, maybe one day soon, uh, we'll be able to come back and visit you once again. For those of you who don't know me or don't remember me, uh, I, I labor at serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a full-time worker in the gospel in my area of Scotland. If you don't know where Scotland is, then you have to get your map or go on Google Earth and have a look and see where Scotland is. It is a wonderful place. Now, I'm married. My wife is a primary school teacher, and I have five children. I know I'm extremely young, but these are my five children. Rebecca uh, is 16, uh, and then Judith is 15. Benjamin is 12. He has just started secondary school. Samuel is uh, nine, almost 10. Uh, and then Leah is at the front there. She's probably my favorite, but don't tell anybody that. Uh, she has just started primary one, so she's just turned four years old and she has gone off to school. Now, all of these children uh, are adored by their father. And it's wonderful to be able to uh, see your children progress. And I'm sure that your family are exactly the same with you. They want you to do well in school and to progress in school. But what I want to do is I want to speak to you about someone who did very well in school, who progressed in an excellent way in school, but also went on for God. He put God first in his life. And I'm going to speak to you about some famous things because Scotland is famous for so many different things. I don't know what you think about when you think of Scotland. Hopefully you think about me. But if I had to mention the word Scotland, perhaps you'll say, oh yeah, I can just imagine the snow-capped mountains and people travel for thousands of miles to come and to see our mountains and to ski, ski or snowboard on our mountains. Some people might say, well, the castles, and that's so true, this castle is up in Inverness, just next to Loch Ness, and it's absolutely beautiful, Urquhart Castle it's called, and there's castles dotted all round about Scotland, and they're wonderful to go and see, and I would urge you to try and do that if you can, actually. Maybe you say, well, if I think about Scotland, I think about kilts and bagpipes and, and soldiers and so on. And again, that might be the case. Now, I have a kilt. Uh, I'm not going to wear it for you, uh, but I don't play the bagpipes. I've tried to. They are very difficult. Don't do it. Sorry about that, guys. Maybe you say, well, when I think about Scotland, I think about golf. It is the home of golf, the place where golf was invented. And it's actually my favorite hobby. I love golf. My two boys, Ben and Samuel, they love golf as well. Uh, they would play every day if they could. And uh, they're not as good as their father yet. Uh, but Samuel possibly could be. He's a very good golfer. Maybe you think about these things when you think about Scotland. Well, actually, I want to speak to you about a famous Scottish man. And actually, Scotland has got so many famous Christians, people that put God first in their life, people that had trusted Jesus Christ as their saviour. And this man is a man called Eric Liddell. And Eric Liddell was a remarkable person. He went on to huge success, but the most important thing in his life was God. Now, I've got a question for you. In your life, what is the most important thing? Is the most important thing your school? Is the most important thing your family? Is the most important thing success? Is the most important thing money? Well, all these things will fall into place if God is your desire, if God is what you want, if God is how, want you, how you want to grow. And the first step is trusting Jesus Christ as your savior. 
accepting the fact that he died on the cross in Calvary for you to be saved from your sins and then following after him. That's exactly what this man did here. A man called Eric Little. Let me tell you about him. You might have heard about him from a couple of uh, movies or films, actually. I know uh, Indian people like to watch movies. And Chariots of Fire is a really wonderful old film. And that is about the life of Eric Little. And also On Eagle's Wings is this sort of sequel to that. I just watched that recently, actually, and it's really worth watching, all based on the life of this man. So if I'm speaking to you about this man, and there's been two uh, movies made about this man, well, what has he done? Well, let's find out about Eric Little. Eric was born into a family on the 16th of January, 1902. Now, that's a long number of years ago. You can use your mathematics and work that out by yourself. But Eric was born... In a time when the world was completely different to what it is nowadays, there was no there was no ease of travel. And maybe that's just like now with COVID actually, but there was no ease of travel. Things were a lot more simple and life was completely plain without the nonsense that we have nowadays. Thankfully, no social media and nothing like that. But Eric was born into a family of Christians. Now what does that mean? Scotland where I live just now is classed as a Christian country. That did not make me a Christian when I was born into this country. It's like you don't become a motor car if you go into a car showroom. Doesn't make sense. You don't become chocolate if you go into a sweet shop. You don't become a Christian if you go to church. You don't become a Christian if you're born in a Christian country. You become a Christian by trusting Jesus Christ for yourself. And that's exactly what this young man did here. He was born into a family with his uh, older brother and eventually a younger sister as well. Uh, and this family were a close, close family. And this family, actually, they served God. Because although Eric is classed as a Scottish person, he was actually born in China. His mum and dad, they were Christians and they decided that they wanted to leave Scotland and travel to China to go on a mission for God. They were called missionaries. They wanted to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to different people. And Eric was born across in China, and uh, his, it was a tough, tough part of China. He was from in North China, and uh, the area he was living with his parents was extremely hard, and his dad had uh, built a little church there, and he served the Lord, and he had regular services there. And Eric had a, a great childhood. He was outside all the time. He was always running about. Just keep that in mind. He was always running. He was always playing. He was always faster than his brother as well. And Eric, at a very, very young age, realized that what my dad is telling me is so true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. And just as a young boy, Eric Little heard this message over and over and realized, I want to trust Jesus. And he did that. Now, there's nothing difficult about that. It's just called having faith. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And he quite simply confessed before God he was a sinner, realizing that Jesus Christ died for his sins and said, Lord, just save me. Now that transformed his life. That completely changed his life. He then decided that he wanted to give his best for God. Although he was just a boy, he wanted to put God first in his life. Now, he was, he was pretty academic. Now, I know that you pupils in Clarence uh, High School are very academic, actually, and I've experienced your, 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 some of your work, and it's wonderful. But Eric didn't have to try too hard at school. He was pretty natural in what he did. His brother was, had to work a lot harder, actually. Eventually, Eric's mum and dad came back home to Scotland. Now, that's not a small trip to go on. That's over 23,000 kilometres. That's a long, long way to go. And you can't just jump on an aeroplane in 1915. They had to go by boat right around the bottom of Africa, up into Scotland, into England first, and then to Scotland, actually. And they came back there for a little rest, some respite. And then they decided they were going to leave their children there. Now, actually, I've often thought about leaving my children somewhere, but anyway. But they left their children there, and they then came back to China by themselves, and they left the two boys to go to a school called Blackheath School, which was a boarding school in England. 
And when they arrived there, Eric was pretty upset. He, he missed his parents. And uh, for the first couple of weeks, he cried himself to sleep. And he was really, really homesick and wanted his mum and dad. But then things began to click into place. His schooling was good. His learning was excellent. His homework was great. But then, as he was working through school, disaster struck. World War I was declared. Now, at this point in time, Eric's older brother was ready or was aged to be called up to serve the British Army in World War I. His mum was worried about this. You can imagine how concerned he was. And Eric was concerned about this. And he began to panic and worry. And he prayed to God, God, please, just, I want my brother to be protected. If he goes to war, I want him to be, to be protected. Amazingly enough, his brother actually broke his leg playing football the day before he was due to go and join the army. It was a bad break and he was unable to join the army after that. And he was protected in a sense. He didn't go to war. But Eric, right through those war years, he worked hard and he worked diligently and he pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. He had so many hobbies, lots and lots of hobbies. His hobbies were so many sporting events, but he wanted to be wise. Now, I wonder if you're wise. Your motto in school is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's caused by putting God first in your life. Maybe you are saved. Maybe you do belong to Jesus Christ. Well, you have to be like Eric Little and, and, and put God first and, and want to serve him and read your Bible and pray and study and find out more about his will for your life. Eric, put God first. And God blessed them. Maybe you're not saved. That's the first step of being wise, not being unwise, but trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Having a, a real reverential fear of realizing how great and mighty God is. Eric realized how much God was in control and that was going to influence his life. Now, one day, Eric was, he was doing his hobby. He was out running. He was a fast, fast, fast runner. I, I run quite a lot. I would do five or 10K every day or every second day, and I enjoy running, clears my head. But Eric was different. He was a fast, speedy, 100 yards, 200 yards runner, but he trained and he trained and he trained. And one day, a man came to him and said, Eric, you are phenomenal. I've got a proposal for you. This is what I think you could do. He got excited. He began to think, oh, well, what is this? And if you want to know what it is, you have to wait until Tuesday morning. And I'll tell you on Tuesday morning what this proposal was for Eric Liddell. But as I leave you today, I want you to go with God's blessing. I want you to know that the God of all eternity loves you. I want you to know that you can live your life for God. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Put him first, revere him in your life, and he will bless you in what you do. Try your best today. Work your hardest today. And if you haven't done so, trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. God bless. It's lovely to be able to uh, speak to you today. Sorry I can't actually be with you physically, but thank you and God bless. And we'll continue the message tomorrow. Goodbye.